how many times have you heard, especially in 2020 in this dynamic of politics that we're seeing right now, how many times have you heard about a United States Senate vote of 100 to zero? We got that just this week in the United States Senate when a new bill was passed dealing with reforms to the Olympic Commission and the Olympics here in the United States. There's some remarkable stuff going on that was absolutely essential given the abuse that has been going on for years in the Olympics. Of course, most notably highlighted perhaps by Larry Nassar and the sexual abuse scandal surrounding that medical doctor who has been sentenced. And my gosh, just recognizing all of the trials and tribulations of so many different Olympians and what they have gone through and children in Olympic affiliated organizations for, you know, sports, various sports and so forth. That is important. We cannot forget it. We must recognize it. And now the United States Senate has done exactly that in passing a brand new bill. The Strengthening U.S. Olympics Act is part of it here. And I am so pleased to welcome here on Jimmy at the Crossroads, someone who was very instrumental in trying behind the scenes to help get this thing shaped and moved forward, Eli Bremer, who in 2008 was a modern pentathlete in the 2008 Beijing Olympics, and then also Judge Rosemarie Aquilina joins us. She was the judge who sentenced Larry Nasser. Welcome to you both for joining uh, for, to the program today. I appreciate you joining us here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Congratulations. I mean, this is something that has been well over a year, a couple of years, few years in the works, particularly in the Senate side, U.S. Senator Cory Gardner. Now it's the balls in the House of Representatives for this bill with uh, Representative Diana DeGette, a Democrat, Gardner, a Republican over in the Senate. Uh, we'll talk about what the bill is in a little bit here, but I would love, uh, Eli Bremer, if you could please sort of set the table for us to initiate on why this bill was necessary and what's going on here with the Olympic reforms. Yeah, well, Jimmy, thanks for thanks for having us on and thanks for talking about this. It's a very important issue. You know, I'll start by saying the Olympics are America's team, and this is this is something that are, that should be very important to every person in our country. It's not partisan. This is something that's for Americans of, of all stripes. Uh, and so that's why this is important. Uh, for years, the Olympic Committee has, has very, strug very much struggled. And uh, I'd spent years talking about systemic problems on governance inside the Olympics. And in 2016, sort of the, the bandit got ripped off when we discovered that there were massive amounts of systemic sexual abuse going on, and it was being covered up by the governance problems that the Olympic Committee had had for years. So I started working with the sexual assault victims, uh, both in gymnastics that uh, Judge Aquilina has helped so much, but also in other sports like swimming and taekwondo. And um, this is part of a comprehensive reform that will deal with both the structural parts of the Olympics, but also things, uh, tactical pieces like sexual assault reporting, uh, and inappropriate relationships with coaches that leads to rape. Uh, Judge Rosemarie Aquilina, I mean, obviously the, the Nasser trial was something that so many, countless Americans were just glued to, very deeply concerned about the sexual abuse that was happening, uh, tied in with the gymnastics programs and so forth. Can you please just sort of refresh us on what happened with Nasser and how that is emblematic of something that has been just so ruinous to the Olympics for many years and now is finally under the microscope? So Nasser ended up before three different judges, federal and then two state. I sentenced him to 40 to 175 years. The other judge in Michigan did uh, 40 to 125 years. And the federal judge sentenced him to 60 years, and that was for child pornography. What has happened in the cases that were in front of me shows this culture of silence that Eli has been fighting against, the sexual assault of athletes and what he did under the guise of medical without permission of parents without knowledge of anyone uh, without gloves without lubricants uh, 
groomed everyone to believe that this sexual act, placing his fingers in young girls' vaginas, some, in some cases over 800 mm. times, was medical treatment, when in fact it was not treatment. It was grooming the world to believe he was the best, he was the only, and it was medical. And it was very harmful to these women, and they will have now a lifetime of healing, which is why this legislation is so important because it finally places the athlete over money and medals and it gives accountability voice and protection and as eli said it's fabulous for the united states but we are always the leader and this is happening all over the world so finally this is a step to not just change the united states uh, Eli Bremer, one of the things that the judge just pointed out was this culture of silence. And, and I'd like for you to expand upon that a little bit, because whether it's sexual abuse or other kinds of abuse, there was a culture of silence going on in the Olympics for many years where this kind of abuse would happen and it would just be swept under the rug. People wouldn't speak about it. And it took a very concerted effort. I think, the, of course, with Larry Nasser, that helped to bring a lot of attention to some aspects of the issue. But even after that, you guys still had to, you and so many other former Olympians had to do a heck of a lot of work in order to draw attention and say, this is much bigger than just one man. Absolutely, and and I'll take uh, I'll take issue with your your use of the word was a yeah. problem. Uh, yeah. This is still a problem, Thank and you. you know I have received threats. My family's received threats, uh, very very overt, uh, for speaking out on these issues. But it's important because this is a quarter billion dollar entity that is a government sanctioned monopoly. Uh, it's granted a charter by the federal government, and it's been run like a private club. And so. We need to we need to expose what's been going on. There needs to be a broad cultural change. Uh, and, and that's a huge issue that will still need to be undertaken because it definitely is not there yet. I got a call just a few days ago from an athlete who had been uh, effectively accosted for speaking out and and was told your positions in threat for speaking out on an issue uh, that was very germane. It had directly to do with um, with athlete abuse. And so it's still alive and well today. And our hope is that as uh, Senate Bill 2330 now moves to the House and then gets implemented, we have this Olympic Commission uh, that will take effect. I really hope we're able to, to really go through and gut the system and change the culture. Just last year, there was a press conference, which I was so pleased to be able to attend, where we had a number of, of former Olympians together to talk about the need for reform. There you are, Judge, speaking to the group. Um, it was such a profoundly impactful moment for me because this wasn't something that I had followed very closely. And yet when I was there hearing so many different stories presented uh, about what kind of abuse had been, and as Eli pointed out, is continuing to go on, it was shocking to me. And I, I know that you felt so passionately to get out in front as well at this press conference, which is when Senator Cory Gardner, the lead sponsor in the Senate, and U.S. Representative Diana DeGette were announcing Representative DeGette's signing on as a lead sponsor in the House of Representatives. But I, I would like for you, please, to just share sort of why this is so important from your standpoint and why you were there at the press conference and have been an advocate for this reform legislation. I believe that the safety of children needs to be in the forefront of everyone's mind. And we, as the adults, are the voice of the voiceless. And children really have no voice. And what's happening with the Olympics, which everybody looks to, and when you think of Olympians, it's not just those people we see on television competing. It's the young child who starts in gymnastics or in basketball or whatever sport they're interested in. And then they figure out, hey, this is what I want to do. So every child is susceptible. And it's interesting because the studies show that positivity creates better athletes. And yet they are berated, belittled. Mm. They are room to believe that if they don't succumb to cruelty, they will be kicked off, they won't succeed. It's the opposite of what we should teach our children and mm. understand that I may be dead when all of this is, is uh, passed and done because we have so much work to do, but we are protecting the next generation, not just the current generation. We must have voice for children, safety for children, they need to know that there's informed consent and that when they say no, whether they are 2, 12, or 20, it really does mean no. And coaches, 
doctors, teachers do not have the right to harm them in any way. And I just mm -hmm. have the question, why would a coach be afraid to use positivity when we know it works? Eli Bremer, let's talk about the specifics of this bill. Give us a recap of the name of the legislation. And I understand that it is a real compromise because it blended two bills, including the one I was mentioning, alluding to in terms of Senator Cory Gardner being lead sponsor of, uh, melding in with another piece of legislation that covers a couple of different angles when you put it all together. So what will this bill actually do if, and I think when, it becomes law? Yeah, I believe it will become law. I think we've got broad bipartisan support. There's been uh, literally around 500 Olympians that have signed a letter asking Congress to pass this. So it's Senate Bill 2330 is the final, uh, the number of the bill, and um, that will now go over to the House. And it was a, it was a meshing together of two bills. So the, the part that I've been working on was the Olympic Reform Commission. That was the brainchild of Senator Gardner. Uh, he reached across the aisle and, and, uh, and Congresswoman Diana DeGette. I uh, took this up and said, I want to co-sponsor this. So uh, that was the angle I've been working on. That was what Judge Aquilina came out last year to Colorado. Uh, thank you, Judge, for making that trip. And then um, the, the Nassar victims had actually been working on other, you know, sort of, I would say, more tactical reforms regarding sexual assault reporting, things like that. Uh, there, there had been a, a bit of friction between the two sides just saying, hey, look, we need to, we need to make this all come together. And uh, thankfully, the, the politicians worked together. They said these, these two efforts are actually synergistic, not competitive. They brought the two efforts together, and, and now we have a, a very good comprehensive reform bill in Senate, Senate Bill 2330. Yeah, one thing just finally uh, for you, Eli Bremer, about this, the commission is that it actually has some teeth. Like this isn't something that is is purely, hey, let's just examine the issues and then say, hey, this is a problem, right? Yes, that's correct. It's going to have full subpoena power. Uh, in fact, this was something the Olympic Committee fought broadly against in my conversations with Congress. They were they were complaining wildly that the commission is going to have the ability to actually look behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is the Olympic Committee, it, though again, federally chartered, it's effectively a public organization, has, has never had an outside look at it. No one's ever been able to look under the hood, actually see what's going on. And we know the atrocities that are there. Former disgrace CEO Scott Blackman was emailing Steve Penny, the disgrace CEO of uh, USA Gymnastics, and Blackman was deleting his emails on the server and then lying to the FBI about it. Wow. When you have an organization that has that much cultural corruption at the top, you can only imagine the other things that are going on in there. So that's why the, um, that's why the Senate and Congress has wisely put in subpoena power to give this commission the ability to go in and say what is really going on behind the curtains that are the U.S. Olympic movement.